All right, so this video, we are going to get our app set up on the Google Play Store. Now, this is with the intent for beta testing, so it's not going to be in its final format, but we will be able to share it with friends to test it out and get some feedback on the app. We already did this with iOS and Test Flight, so that video I will link below, but this video will be covering just Google Play. So we will be following along this um, deployment guide, which is on the flutter.dev. So the first thing it talks about is adding a launcher icon. We've already done that in a past video, so I'll link that below as well. So the first thing we need to do is create a key store, and we can copy and paste this command here, and it's gonna ask us for a passphrase. So this is something that can really be anything. I will give it the passphrase password one, two, three. Uh, you should use something more secure, I guess, than that. And then it's gonna ask you a few questions. So my first name, Dave, organizational unit, we'll do one man startup. And I'll do the same thing here. City, Austin, state, Texas, um, in the US. And really what this is doing is it's, it's adding all these parameters, which will be part of the key itself. So I think my understanding of this is that that's just an extra level of security, basically. Your key is going to be stored at this location here. Now, if you wanted to store it somewhere else back in this command here, just change this to be the path of where you want to keep the key. All right, so now that we have that key created, we actually need to create a new file, and this is going to be within our Flutter app directory here, and then go into the Android and create the new file within this directory. And this file's name is going to be key.properties. And actually, we don't want to add this to source control. Um, so in your git ignore, you go where the Android files are here. And we're going to go Android and then what we named it, key.properties. Opening up that file, there's, a, there's this snippet of code that we will be modifying so the store password is going to be that password that we set to password one two three and we're going to add that in both places here the key alias is key and if you look back in this command here you can see where we set that alias this last flag here so if you set that to something else you're going to want to change that there the file store is actually what was output here so go ahead and copy that and paste it there. All right, and then just save that. Now we're going to need to do some slight configurations so that we're able to use this key to sign our app when we're creating that build of our app. So we're gonna open up the Android app build.gradle. So within this app directory, find the build.gradle. The properties we have in here, we're going to pull these values into the build.gradle file. So find where it has the Android block right here. And right above that is where we're going to paste these. We're going to paste this code here. So you can see this is really just pulling the properties from our key.properties file. So it's going to basically be pulling these four variables here and making it accessible within this build.gradle file. So once we have that done, we can actually use them, find where the build types is down here. And you can see that it's saying, we have a to-do marked here that we need to add our own signing configuration, which is what we're actually gonna be doing right now. So you can see that this is set for debug right now. So we wanna change that to release. And then above this build types, we're going to add this code here. And this is going to be pulling those key store properties, which again are from that key.properties file, but they are imported right here with that code we added initially. And all of this code, I'm going to have both on GitHub and I'll link to the documentation that I'm reading from. The next thing is we're going to review the app.manifest file. So this is in our SRC main and then the Android manifest.xml. So within here, we already basically have everything set up to go here. So you can see we already named our app what we want to name it, Travel Treasury. And the only configuration we need to add here is that 
we need to give it internet permission because our app will be using the internet. It's pretty easy to add to add a permission. You can use this use this uses permission block and then the permission that we're going to be giving it is going to be android.permissions.internet. So that's going to be the name. The min SDK version, we can just give it 29, which is going to be, or you give it 28. So the next thing we can do is review the build configurations. That is going to be back in that build.gradle file that we were in. And we're going to be looking at the application ID, uh, which is right here in this default configs. Uh, the application ID, which we actually already set this up when we were setting up Firebase. So if you do change this now and you already have Firebase configured, make sure you go and update it there as well min SDK version and target SDK version. We're gonna increase the target SDK version to 29. So now we're ready basically to build the app for release. And there are two ways you can do this. One is using an app bundle and the other is using an APK file. So we're gonna do the app bundle because it is the preferred method. To make this build, we just need to go into the app directory, which we're actually already in, and we just need to run flutter build app bundle. Yeah. All right, great. So you can see that build was successful and you can see the file is now here, that app, that app.abb. Now we need to go into the Google Play console. So this is actually a subscription, just like, just like with Apple, you do have to pay to use this. So this is a $25 one-time fee. So it's much cheaper actually than the Apple version of it. But this is Google Play Console, so once you're logged into Google Play, and it's pretty simple to get signed up with this, you just need to pay that $25 fee, you will have this dashboard here. So this is our main, our main screen. So you can see I already have an app for Travel Treasury, so that's actually like the main version of the app that I will be using and deploying, but for the sake of these videos, I'm going to recreate it and do it as a test version of that. So the name for this will do travel treasury test. English is going to be the default. Uh, this is an app, not a game. It's going to be free. And you're gonna to wanna to read through all of these and check that your app does comply with the Google policies as well as the US export laws. So now we have our app in Google Play. So we have a few steps left before we can actually get that beta version going. You can see this is kind of a walkthrough of what we're gonna to need to do. So you're gonna to have to answer a few of these questions. They're all pretty obvious. The answer, you'll know the answer with your app, but uh, for me, all the functions will be available in this app, so I'll check that one. Then go back here. The content rating is gonna is gonna bring you through this questionnaire. For me, when I'm going through all these, they're basically all no, but you're gonna to wanna to read these and make sure your app if your app is yes on some of them, you're just gonna to wanna to answer yes. But for me, they are actually all no. So that is what I will be answering. And you'll see I get basically the lowest rating in terms of age rating. So it's E for everyone, uh, which is good. And then submit that one. Now we're gonna go back to our to-do. You can see there's still a few things here, but if we wanna look at it from this view, uh, the target audience, uh, my app will contain ads, so I'm gonna answer yes on that. And then the target audience is gonna be 18 and older. I don't really think anyone under 18 will really be traveling, so that is why I will answer it that way. Uh, I don't think this appeals to children. What this question is basically asking is, can a child unintentionally download your app thinking it's for a child? I mean, I think it's pretty much no, but no, the no answer here makes it seem like Google is, is like way more strict with it. I could do, I'm, I'm just gonna answer yes for that. And save. Then back on the dashboard, we have just a few left. News app, this is not news app, so let's save there. And then now we can select the app category. So it is an app, not a game. The category for me, I think travel is going to be the main category. Then you can also add some tags. So go through and look at what tags make sense for your app and, and just check those. I'm not gonna go through that now. 
add the email address website i'll add the travel treasury website external marketing i'm going to check this as yes because if google wants to advertise this app outside of google play that's fine with me last thing we have is to set up our store listing so this stuff here i just filled in um this is worth uh thinking about a good bit a lot of this will help you get your app found when in in the google play search and and really just getting your app uh better described is always a good idea because people that are looking for an app for a specific reason might not know of your app until they're searching and then these descriptions and the app name and basically everything on this page is what's going to really make them decide if they want to download it or not so if you're interested in seeing more information on how to do all this stuff and the better way to do all this then comment down below i probably will make another video just doing specifically that for now i kind of have like temporary data that i'm just going to upload here so the logo this def this does have to be 512 by 512 so make sure you have that same with the featured graphic i just have this blank one that is just the size of 1024 by 500 the phone screenshots these i would never in production just upload screenshots that look like this but but for now obviously this is just for my testing beta users i'm fine with that once you do the phone screenshots you actually don't need to do the tablet ones and since this won't even really be available on tablet i'm going to leave those blank so yeah that is good for at least the beta version of it so now if we go back to our dashboard we finished that initial checklist so now we can actually start testing our app with a small number of trusted users. So the first thing we're gonna do is select our testers. And you can see I already have a group here of beta testers, which is really just me right now. But you don't even need to, you don't even need to create a list of testers because we will be able to get a, a shareable link here. And that shareable link, you can just give to anyone that you want to test it that has an Android phone. So under the release here, we're going to create a new release and app signing by Google. We basically already did everything we need to to set this up so we can hit continue here. And now it's gonna ask us to upload that AAB file. So if you remember where it is here, I think we can actually just drag it from Android Studio and that should upload it. Uh, release name here, this you can give anything you want. I'm just gonna say beta version one. For the release notes, I mean, if you want to put any notes to the people that you're going to be sending this to, you could do that there, but I'm going to leave that how it is. All right, so you can see I'm getting an error here about this AAB file and that my package name is already in use in Google Play. I mean, for me, I guess I didn't deploy this app yet, but I guess it's possible someone else is maybe using this. Now, I do already have the app set up with a travel... Tra travel budget first app name so we can i'll just show you what the rest of that's like basically the point that we were at there is you would upload you upload that aab file and that's really it once that's uploaded you're going to you're going to get basically the page will look like this if you go over to the left on the side here testing and then the internal testing which is what we've set up you can see under the releases, we do have this one available release. If you click on the testers tab here, you can add a list of testers. I have a list called beta testers, which is just emails. And you can also just copy this link here, which is going to be basically a public downloadable link that will allow anyone to download this beta version of your app through the Google Play Store and then test it out. Now, one thing I have noticed is it does take quite some time for this actual link to work. It took about three days for this actually to be available on my physical device. But if you go to the link here, and again, this is three days after recording that video, but if you go to that share link, uh, initially, initially the logo was not actually here. Um, today it is. And then if you click on this, download it from Google Play, for the past three days, it would just show a loading circle. So I guess this is normal. Google does review them, so... If it's taking multiple days, uh, just wait it out for that. I think this only happens on the initial first upload, and then after that, it's much quicker. But from here, now the app should be installed, and you can open it up. Yeah, 
That's all you need to do to get a Android version of your app on the Google Play Store for testing. So the next step now is you should get this out there, send it to as many people as you can, and get as much feedback as possible so that you can refine parts of your app that are confusing and then get it ready for the actual production launch.